everybody in about 24 hours one of the biggest events of the year will be going down but before we get to that i am your host jeremy pierce welcome welcome one and all to the high risk wrestling podcast check out the socials charismatic creations on facebook and youtube charismatic underscore creations 52 on instagram and of course the 215 on twitter so what is that major event well forbidden door went down this past sunday but this saturday tomorrow we've got money and the bank the annual event that changes careers is going down we're going to preview the show um who i think will be the inevitable winners of the respective briefcases but for now you know what's next so just go on and hit my music all right so we before we get into money the bank 2024 you know we've got to look at 2023 we got to see the matches preview that not preview this show but just go over the results real quick so we had seven matches on the car which is really 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 good um it's different from what the derby has been doing recently but we opened up with the men's money the bank ladder match which was won by damian priest um that match also included butch la knight logan paul ricochet Santos Escobar and Shinsuke Nakamura and outside of outside of Butch Ricochet and Santos Escobar uh, I thought Priest Logan Paul and Shinsuke had the NLA Knight had the biggest shots at winning the briefcase this match had one two three four five six seven eight people in it whereas this year's has I think six but Damian Priest won that briefcase and cashed in at Wrestle mania this year and he's the current world heavyweight champion then we had a tag team match with Liv morgan and raquel rodriguez defeating the team of ronda rousey and Shayna baszler to win the wwe women's tag team championship now now uh ronda and Shayna did their turn around at that point but we know what went down at SummerSlam. the third match on the card was gunther defeating matt riddle retaining the intercontinental championship and gunther was just on a roll at this point and people forget now that he's out of the, the limelight how over matt riddle was our fourth match in the car was cody rose defeating dominic mysterio this was just a one-off feud a one-off um match to hold cody over until he fought at SummerSlam. um and i want to say he fought brock at SummerSlam. yeah he fought brock at SummerSlam, and that really random feud we still don't know why brock attacked Cody, but yeah, Cody uh, beats Dominic Mysterio. After that, we had Io Sky winning the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Um, she went on to cash in the championship, I believe, at SummerSlam, def- uh, taking the championship from Io Sky. But also in this ladder match was Bailey, Becky Lynch, Trish Stratus, Alina Vega, and Zoe Stark. It was a really good match. I probably like the women's match better than the men's match. Then we had Seth Rollins defeating Finn Balor, retaining the World Heavyweight Championship. And in the main event, we were in the thick of the bloodline. The Usos defeated Roman and Solo in the bloodline Civil War in a fantastic tag team match. But let's dive into this year's card. We have five matches on the card because this is what Triple H likes to do now. I don't know how you all are letting him get away with this this five match card is honestly it's a joke like last year's had seven and you're only doing five so unless something gets added from smackdown tonight this is what we're rolling with so that without further ado we start off with the intercontinental championship Sami Zayn defending against braun breaker and this stems from um, Braun just murdering everybody and feeling disrespected because he wasn't in the King of the Ring tournament. So he has been absolutely brutalizing people. And Sammy had a successful defense of the title at Clash of the Castle. So there's that, right? So he's on a roll after beating Gunther at WrestleMania. And he was eventually interrupted by Braun Breaker, who said he wanted Zayn's championship. Uh, Zayn confronted Braun backstage outside of Adam Pierce's office and agreed to defend the championship and that's 
what we have now because the money debate is taking place in canada in toronto so zayn versus braun and this is going to be a very good match um and here's the thing brown breaker is on an absolute tear right now he is he's killing it he is losing his mind but is he going to win this championship i i wasn't expecting Zayn to have a long championship reign but he has been defending the title he has been putting in some good work but inevitably right Braun has to win his belt he can't just be on a roll um and not win something because I think inevitably he's going to end up feuding with Sheamus at some point so what happens with Sammy in the end I think Braun's going to throw everything at Sammy but Sammy does what Sammy does, and that's overcome and overcome the bigger opponents. That's kind of his specialty. So I like Sammy Zayn to win here, and maybe this feud continues and Sammy gets goaded into another match. But take Sammy Zayn to win here. Next up, we have Damian Priest defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Seth freaking Rollins and this just stems from Seth goading Priest into a match Seth was gone for what two three months and then just gets a world title shot so I know what Drew McIntyre is talking about because it's not fair <clears throat> but there was a stipulation out of here that if Priest loses he has to leave the judgment day and if Rollins loses he can't challenge for the championship as long as priest is champion now when you hear that stipulation the can't challenge as long as someone is champion i think the result is very very obvious and that's seth is losing i'm sorry seth is losing this match he can't just pull a charlotte flair come back and get a title shot and act like everything's okay priest has been putting in some really good work and i do not want him to be a transitional champion yes his ego is starting to get out of the hand thinking he's bigger than the group but the group also needs him and they're on some bs with Liv Morgan now mind you I thought the Liv Zelina match was going to be on this card and I think it should be on this card because like I think Bailey should be defending on this card hell I think um the tag women's tag team title should be on this card the um WWE tag team championships are being defended on Smackdown not on this card I digress let's get back to the match um Priest has been good and, and after that scare at Clash of the Castle with the ropes they got to make up for that. He was able to gut through it, but I don't see him leaving the Judgment Day because of this, because of this stipulation. Uh-uh. No, no, no. It's going to get a lot worse to force him to leave the Judgment Day. And just like how I think Sunday, this past Sunday at Forbidden Door, Swerve defeating Will Ospreay solidified his championship reign. Same's got to happen here with Priest. Priest is going to beat... Seth Rollins and win the the match. He's going to be in the Judgment Day, and Seth can go do something else before he inevitably gets another championship match. Because if Seth doesn't win here, I don't know who's going to beat Priest. And we're still inevitably waiting for Rhea Ripley to come back. And the Judgment Day split, I believe, is going to be the reason that Damian Priest loses the championship. But then we move on to our six-man tag match as the team of Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens will be taking on the Bloodline, and it will be any three members of the Bloodline. So that's Sola Sokoa, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and Jacob Fah Two. Now, here's the thing. I feel like Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa have to be in this match, right? They're the tag team and we have we actually haven't seen Tonga Loa wrestle yet I, I'm almost sure he has I think he's maybe wrestled one tag man so we've got to get eyes on him so now that leaves either Jacob Fatu or Solo Sokoa I don't think Solo's wrestling after how you debuted 
Jacob Fatu. He has to wrestle in this match. Period. Jacob Fatu has to wrestle in this match. And if he... Okay, so look. If Jacob Fatu is wrestling in this match, the bloodline aren't losing. If Solo Sokoa is wrestling in this match, the bloodline are losing. Does that make sense? Because you have to make Jacob Fatu look dominant. He's got to be dominant. And you're in the ring with a team of the current world champion and two former world champions. And getting a win over those three guys will will make the bloodline look dangerous. And I think there should be a stipulation in this match, even though it's a six-man tag. Like, make this a six-man tornado tag, no DQ. I think, I think a normal tag team match doesn't work here. You feel me? Like... Remember when Randy or Triple H had that blood feud leading up to the WrestleMania main event and then they just had a normal one-on-one match? Yeah, that doesn't work. That didn't work there. It doesn't work here. All right. So I'm going to say Jacob Fatu wrestles and I believe the bloodline will win the match. Then we move on to the women's Money in the Bank ladder match and we have six competitors we have eo sky last year's winner chelsea green lyra valkyria tiffany stratton naomi and zoe stark and that's a nice field we got there so we always start with who for sure isn't winning right naomi's not winning so i already say this zoe stark isn't winning so it's coming down to EO, Chelsea, Lyra, and Tiffany. And I th- think, like a lot of people, the odds on favorite is Tiffany Stray. Now, here's here's the thing, right? Lyra has been has been getting a very good push. She's been, you know, mentored by Becky Lynch. She's got some good W's, was in the Queen of the Ring final, but came up short. Chelsea Green is just the wild card. She just is. Imagine, imagine Chelsea Green with the briefcase. Let that sink in. And with Piper backing her, you could safely say she could you could guarantee a victory for Chelsea Green. Remember, every single woman that's won the briefcase has successfully cashed in. But it, it would make sense for Chelsea to be the first woman to cash in and fail, right? EO is another safe bet. She's in this match because out of every single woman in this group, she's the veteran. Even though Naomi is a veteran, EO is the better veteran. EO can kind of keep things along. And that's not to throw shade at Naomi, it's just EO's a better wrestler. Um, Zoe Stark is fantastic here And so is Lyra So we've got a good grouping of women That can keep the match going But Tiffany Stratton winning Makes sense With the exception of this She's been partnered up with Nia Jax Nia Jax won Queen of the Ring And gets a women's championship match At SummerSlam So with Bailey as champion right now, you have to put the money on a heel winning if it's from SmackDown. So it's either Chelsea or Tiffany. And with Liv being a champion on Raw, that's a toss up. Because is she good? Is she bad? And if you say she's bad, then you've got to put the safe money on Lyra. But something about EO just is there. And it's making me think that EO could possibly win this match. And cash in. That night. Well, not that night because Bailey doesn't have a match. But I'm going to go with the safe bet. And I'm going to put the smart money on Tiffany Stratton to win. And now you have Tiffany and you have Nia with pretty much guaranteed championship matches how will that play out for not only their their budding friendship but bailey who's been a fighting 
champion. So I'm going to go with Tiffany Stratton to win the women's money in the bank ladder match. And on the men's side of things, we have the men's money in the bank ladder match. And it consists of Jay Uso, Carmelo Hayes, Andrade, Chad Gable, Ellie Knight, and Drew McIntyre. Okay. So here's the thing. Chad Gable's not winning. Uncle Howdy and the Y6 are going to be heavily involved with this. So that cancels him out. Everybody else is fair game. For, for real. For real. For real. Jey Uso is a top star now. That cannot be des- be denied. And him yeeting all over the country with the briefcase is just good stuff. Mello is the uppercomer. And there are times where we give the briefcase to an uppercomer to see how they do as world champion we did it with um jack swagger we did it with cm punk you know cm punk was an uppercomer he was an uppercomer in the WWE. so you can't rule out mellow same thing with andrade something isn't clicking since his return and I, I get why he returned but something hasn't been working and he's in this match to do some wild stuff and i i don't like want to discredit him but the more I think about it, the more I believe that he's not winning either. So it, then it comes, then it, it boils down to Uso, Mello, Knight, and Drew McIntyre, right? <sighs> if if <sighs> if I if I think about it, right? This is hard. This is very very hard because here's the thing: La Knight has to win a big match. I don't think it's going to be the briefcase. I think we'll get the inevitable Ellie Knight, Knight, Logan Paul feud. So if I think the Wyatt Six are going to screw Gable, I think Logan Paul is going to screw Ellie Knight, setting up their uh, inevitable SummerSlam match. So no Andrade, no Gable, no Knight. We're down to Mello, Jay, and Drew. Even though I would love to see Mello win, he he might not be there. Yet he still needs it like I think still think he needs like a top few something to solidify himself. So now it just comes down to Jay and Drew. Drew is the outlier. Why? Because I truly think he's probably going to win, right? But there's there's that devil. There's CM Punk, right? I could see one of two things happening. Drew successfully wins. Nothing happens and he cashes in on Damian Priest later that night. Cause I think I think the world title match is going to be after the men's money in the bank match. Right. Um I actually think both world title matches are gonna be after the men's money in the bank match, but I don't see Cody losing. Damian Priest is a bigger threat to lose his title that night. Or CM Punk gets involved and causes Drew. And if that happens, then I think the briefcase goes to um, Jay. But in my heart of hearts, head of heads, I think Drew McIntyre is winning this match. And I think this match is going to be absolutely fantastic. Drew's the powerhouse here. Um, and you've got your Flyers and Melo and Andrade and Jay. This is going to be a really, really good match. And I'm intrigued and curious about the potential winners here. But one more time, let's go over our card one more time. I think Sami Zayn defeats Braun Breaker, retaining the Intercontinental Championship. I think Damian Priest defeats Seth Rollins, retaining the um, World Heavyweight Championship. I believe the Bloodline with Jacob Fatu defeats Cody, Randy, and KO. I think Tiffany Stratton wins the Women's Money the Bank Ladder match. I think... Drew McIntyre not only wins the men's money the bank ladder match but also cashes in and I know that's I know that's kind of hard to believe and kind of hard to fathom but I think it goes down like that but that is our show ladies and gentlemen coming up this week let's see what we got for you we got a let's talk about it coming up I'll figure when I get that up we got a couple lists coming up 
um, the top tag teams of the year so far, the top factions of the year so far. We got a flashback Friday. I know I didn't put that on the schedule, but it's coming up. We got that for sure. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going down. And then uh, next week's episode of the Higher Interesting Podcast will be the downside of the WWE draft. We're going to really dive into this thing. But that is our show. Don't forget to check out the socials, Charismatic Creations on Facebook and YouTube, Charismatic underscore Creations 52 on Instagram, and of course, the 215 on Twitter. I'll see you when I see you. And of course, Anna J, Chris Statlander, Bailey, Willow Nightingale, Isla Dawn, and Gigi Dolan. Holla at your boy. Peace. <laughs>